Uh, last week we talked about uh, we have two main methods in design. One called the ultimate, and what else? What called working or allowable? That's right. Uh, do you think? Do you think if you have a building? Do you think we can expect dead load, which is on weight of the structure? Plus life load, this building is full with people. And we have wind load at the same time. And we have earthquake. We have wind. We have earthquake at the same time. We have rainfall. We have snow. What else? Do you think all of these conditions can be happened? At the same time, I believe no, because if all of these conditions happen at the same time, that means we are in Christ. So uh, let the building uh, go. We 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 don't care about the building at this moment. So no way. No, the the standard said said. Sometimes we have dead loot. Not sometimes, all the time. Do you remember from Anfalam line? No way. Dead loot must be exist all the time. We have life loot, we have snow loot, we have wind loot, we have seismic loot. How can I make combination? The standard didn't let the engineer to decide. No, you have to follow the standard. American Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE 7, give you different combinations. The first one, 1.4 dead loot only. Please, if you have a number for dead load, I believe if you go back to the problem, you will find a number for dead load. If you have a number for dead load, go ahead and multiply it by 1.4 and get a number. We have another combination, which is 1.2 dead load. Why this one is 1.4 and this one is 1.2? I don't care because this is the, I'm, I'm following the rules of the standard. American site of civil engineer, seven. Uh, 1.2 plus dead load. 1.6 plus life loot and 0.5 one of them roof life loot or snow loot so please follow these uh, labels d means dead loot l life loot l r roof life loot if you don't have value for roof life loot forget it delete it from these combinations that's it W, I mean by W, is wind loot. E, seismic or earthquake loot. Go ahead, we have another combination. 1.2 plus 1.6. LR or S, whatever, the, great, the greatest value. LR or S, if you don't have LR, okay, go ahead and use S. Plus L or 0.5 W, wind loot. Which one is bigger? I will use the biggest one. Then, Keep going until you did the, ho the whole combination. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven values. We have seven values. We have seven values. My question is, which value I will use to design the maximum value? That's it. The maximum one. These equations in your note these values for dead load life load the uh, snow load wind load air uh, seismic load or earthquake will be given in the problem what do you need to do go ahead and submit these values in this equation or in these combinations as i told you we don't have a choice your building can be under the effect of Dead loot, life loot, snow, rainfall, wind, earthquake, snow. So we will never design our building to be under the effect of all of these forces at the same time. No, we have combinations. Sometimes you're dead only. Sometimes you're dead plus life plus uh, snow. Sometimes you're dead plus snow plus uh, wind. You know what I mean? So we have different combinations. These combinations are given in. American site of civil engineer number seven for loads, or they are given in your notes. If you are talking about 
ultimate design. If you go back last week, I told you ultimate design, we are taking factor of safety in load. So I increased my dead load by 40%. I increased my life load by 60%. Why? Factor of safety. Because I'm taking my life, load, my factor of safety in load, in the applied load. We have another philosophy of design, which called this example. Hey, this example, given L life load, D dead load, LR roof life load. What else? Wind, W, wind uh, 70, seismic, which means E. So D equal 150, L equal 300. L, R equals 60. Wind, W equals 70. A seismic, which is earthquake, equals 50. These labels are the same like those. Go ahead and put your numbers. That's it. And finally, which one I will use? The maximum one. This combination, or this combination, or this combination, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, the maximum value. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? It's very easy, piece of cake. Okay. We have another method which is called allowable stress design. Actually, if you remember, if you go back to last week, I told you the allowable stress design philosophy will not take factor of safety in loads. The factor of safety will be uh, done in material. Your concrete looks like this. The maximum value is here. I can, the concrete can support this level of stress. No, I will design only at this level. Why? Why you, le you left this the difference? Factor of safety. The steel reinforcement, something looks like this, uh, can support this level of stress or this level of yielding. No, I will design only at this level only. And what about the difference? Factor of safety. So I talk the factor of safety in material. So your load will be without any factor of safety. Sometimes we will reduce it a little bit. So the load is alone without any factor of safety, without 1.2 or 1.4. Uh, you can add the dead plus life, whatever. The value of dead, whatever the value of life. And keep going. What about what, what's the value of this combination? This combination, this combination, this com I don't know what, which one is, will be the biggest one. Once you get the values, the biggest value will be the, the maximum value, and this combination will be the more critical combination in your design. Any question? Any question? I think Roberto, you sent me an email in this morning or someone. I, I'm sorry, I didn't respond to your email. But anyway, don't worry. Uh, guys, before leaving this point, uh, you are in a course. This course, uh, it, it, it will not be like structural analysis. If you remember structural analysis, uh, first step in your uh, solution, we need to figure out the reaction. Do you remember? And if you did reaction wrong, I will detect point because everything will be wrong. Actually, uh, uh, this course, it, it will not be the same. Uh, what you mean by will not be the same? For a structural analysis, we have only unique solution. Because the reaction will be only one number, uh, 30 keb, 40 keb, only one number. If you didn't, if you didn't get this number, you did something wrong. But this course, we don't have unique solution. Uh, it's a design. Uh, because if you can design your beam with three bars, someone else will design the beam with four bars. The other one will design the beam with five bars. Actually, all of them will be correct if you are safe. If your solution is safe, you are good. If solution is safe uh, and then nobody will die due to the collapse of the building, you are good. Uh, if your design is safe, you are good. So we don't have unique solution for this course. 
Okay, so what is the difference between this solution or this design and this design and this design? The economic difference. How much this design will cost? How much this one will cost? How much this one will cost? Actually, we don't care about the cost in this course. After your graduation, no, you need to uh, pay attention how much it will cost. Okay, so you can judge between this solution or this solution or this solution but in this course we don't have unique solution we have many solutions all of them will be correct this is the um, philosophy of design courses no no don't worry uh, for the homework the last two problem i will uh skip them from the homework no problem okay uh, you, guys you know uh, me you are a senior student right now so i don't care about i'm not a tough instructor I'm, my concern is to learn and this course is a special is a special course because this course will let you know or will let you learn something about design okay so please make your purpose in this course to learn something will give you benefits in the future if you would like to pass pe professional engineer exam especially in structural engineer you will never pass this course uh, this exam without this course you will never pass this exam professional engineer exam especially in depth structure engineer without this course actually without this course and the next course in uh, spring semester steel design okay uh, before leaving this point i uploaded a pdf file where uh, in uh, i'm sorry Content, uh, lecture notes, table. Please, if you have the chance to print these uh, pages, I think they are only 15 or 20 pages. You will need them during the exam. You will need them during the exam. Actually, you will need them every time you are working on concrete design. Okay, actually, we will uh, use them today also. Uh, next step or next topic in this week, we will talk about lectural analysis of beam. Lectural analysis of beams. What you mean by lectural analysis of beams? I would like to explain something very important. Please, everybody pay attention to me. Um, just a second. Concrete beam looks like this in three D. The radial beam looks like this. This is called concrete beam. In structure analysis course, we represent this beam by only one line. Just center line of this geometry can be called beam in structural analysis. And we have real support, like a column. We have a column in this side and another column on the other side. And these columns represented in our course of structural analysis by something called support. That's right. We learned all of this stuff before. 
inside this reinforced concrete, we have steel rebars. Steel rebars at the top or at the bottom, we will learn during this course. But anyway, these steel rebars at the bottom in this situation or this case. So we have steel rebars. Can you make cut in this beam and draw the cross section? If you make cut and watch side view, what do you expect to see? I think, I think I can expect to see rectangle shape. of the beam i expect to see these rebars as circles do you agree do you agree these steel rebars are with circular cross section and here is the geometry So if you make cut and watch side view, you will see these rebars like circle. So in this course, we will see something like this. Hey, this beam with two bars, number four. I'm sorry, this is a beam? Yes, this one is a beam. How is this one called a beam? This one actually cross section of a beam. In the real life, looks like this. And we have two, we have two steel rebars at the bottom. They are drawn at the bottom of the cross section. So we have at the bottom here two rebars what is the size number four the first table uh, the first table in this pdf pdf file this one table a2 what is the bar number what is number five uh, i'm sorry what is the number four i'm sorry what is number four here is bar number four the diameter of this bar 0.5 inch the cross section area of this bar 0.2 inch square the weight of unit feet length of this bar 0.668 pound if you would like to make cost estimation if you would like to uh, to, to to calculate how much this building or this design will cost it's out of scope of this course. Probably scheduling or uh, cost estimation course. So my concern right now, if I give you the number of bar, what is the size of this bar number four, number five, number six, number seven, I can figure out what is the diameter is, what is the cross section area is. So this table is very important, very important. Okay, so how many bars? Two. Here is the cross section. Any question so far? Any question so far? We are learning basics right now. Um, what else? So we have something called reinforced concrete beams. What does it mean? We have a concrete beam with steel rebars so we can call it reinforced concrete beams in the uh, future i will not write reinforced concrete beam i will write r c beam what does it mean if you open any uh, scientific paper or any publication or any standard or any pdf file from google you will find something called r c beams means reinforced concrete 
beings. That means we have concrete and embedded reinforcement. From structure analysis, from structure analysis, we learn it. If you have any beam, we can expect bending moment diagram, shear force diagram, and actual uh, axial force diagram. Okay, the real life, the real beam looks like this. We have this side is tension, and we have this side is compression. You have a beam looks like this and this beam is supported here and supported here and you stand on this beam i believe this beam will be deformed like this so which side will be under tension i think the bottom side and which side will be under compression the top side so sometimes we have Steel reinforcement in the tension. This one is essential. Without this reinforcement, failure will be happen. Do you remember why uh, steel reinforcement in tension is very important? Because concrete is very weak in tension and very strong in compression. So sometimes we add steel reinforcement in compression. Why steel reinforcement in compression? Concrete is very strong. Why you add steel reinforcement to help concrete to support this compression in three cases? If you would like to get a, a, a smaller concrete or a, a reduce the long term deflection due to creep, if you expect issues with creep deformation with time, so steel reinforcement in compression will reduce this effect. We have another uh, function for this reinforcement to hang the stirrups. We will learn all of this stuff later. So, if you did a cross section for this beam, for general, we have tension reinforcement, we have compression reinforcement, we have cross section. If you make cut and watch, the side view you will see something like this cross section of the reinforced concrete beam say it again these rebars at the bottom represent the bottom reinforcement in the real beam these rebars, these circles, represent the compression reinforcement, uh, compression reinforcement in the real B. So this one I will call it area S. This one will be area S prime. So this one area S prime for steel rebars in compression. Area S steel rebars in tension. During your solution, during this course, we will label these elements by area S and area S prime. The total height of this cross section called T, cross section thickness, the total thickness or height of the cross section. We have width B cross section width we have something called d d means depth d means depth of the steel reinforcement intention so the distance between the center line of this reinforcement to the top of the cross section this called D. This term is very important, very important. D. The depth or effective depth is the distance between the top of the cross section to the steel reinforcement intention. We have another term called D prime. 
which is the distance between the top of the cross section to the center line of the steel reinforcement in compression, D prime. So the remaining distance here, the remaining distance, because I, I told you this distance between the top and the steel reinforcement called D, and the T is the total distance from the top to the bottom. So we have here a little distance. This distance called cover. C called concrete cover. Guys, I cannot put my steel reinforcement here. Do you know why? Corrosion will happen shortly because you expose steel reinforcement to the environmental change. But I moved this reinforcement to be, I'm sorry, to be embedded inside concrete. And we have here a little distance, this little distance called cover. This cover probably between 1.5 until probably three inch. So this little distance, the remaining distance here called the cover. This cover is very important, very important to protect steel reinforcement against corrosion. So during this course, we will have beam, reinforced concrete beam will be represented by the cross section. Sometimes we have steel reinforcement in the compression zone, can be called area steel prime, and the steel reinforcement in tension zone called area steel. The dimensions for the cross section, we have width, B, we have total thickness, T, we have depth, D, we have depth, D prime, we have cover, C. Any question? Okay, we have three stages for the reinforced concrete beam. My question is, if you remember last week, we have two curve. The first one, strain stress curve for concrete in compression. And strain stress curve of concrete intention. Do you remember? And at that time, I told you we have very huge level of strength in compression and very little strength in tension. That means concrete is very strong in compression and very weak in tension. So if you have reinforced concrete beam, with support here and another support there, do you think if you have very little load, very small, very small force, do you think once you put this little force on the beam, do you think concrete will be cracked? So I expect, actually I expect to have compression here. And I expect to have tension. If the, if the concrete cannot support this tension because it's weak, crack will happen. We can expect a crack here. My question is, do you think once I put any level of load, very small load, do you think this very small load will exceed the tension capacity or the tensile capacity of concrete? No, I, I think, I think if I put very small load, 
I'm still within this limit. I'm still within this limit. But if I increased this load a little bit and I became outside this limit, I can expect crack because concrete cannot support the this tension force or this these tensile stresses. So I expect cracks. How can I support these cracks? I have to put steel reinforcement to cross these cracks and prevent any failure. So I can explain something valuable for you. Steel reinforcement, the function of steel reinforcement will not work. The function of steel reinforcement will not work until concrete would like to crack. At this moment, steel reinforcement will support this tension instead of concrete. So, did you understand what is the mechanism of the beam? Reinforced concrete beam. We have one side under tension, the other side under compression. For the side under tension, concrete can support a little bit of tension. If you exceed this level of strength in tension, we can expect cracks. At this moment, we have T reinforcement will prevent the propagation of these of these cracks because you increased the applied force. What will happen if you increased the applied force more and more? and more we can expect more tension and then the tension will cause stress in the steel reinforcement and we already know that the relationship between strain and the stress for steel reinforcement if this level of tension which causes stress if this level within this linear relationship you are still in working stage. If this tension increased and this stress increased until you reach yielding or strain hardening, that means you reach the ultimate stage. One more time. If, you inc if your applied force is very small, this tension in concrete within the limit. So concrete is good. But I increased the applied force more and more. So this tension increased more and more. I exceeded the limit of concrete in tension. So concrete cannot support anymore. So steel reinforcement will start to work. Once the steel reinforcement start to work, at this moment, this is steel reinforcement under tension. Okay, keep going. I will increase these loads more and more. So the tension will increase. In the steel reinforcement, that means the stresses in this steel reinforcement will increase. If you're still in this limit of this linear relationship, you are in the working stage. But if the applied force increased and the tension increased and the stresses increased until you reach yielding or ultimate, you are in the ultimate stage. So we have three stages of the reinforced concrete beam. The first stage can be called 
an craig concrete stage what does it mean uncracked this concept is very important uncracked means your loot is small enough to cause tension in concrete and this is tension still within the limit of tensile strength of concrete that means the concrete is still okay in tension nothing will happen so we can call this stage and correct concrete the whole cross section of concrete is still okay still working so we can represent this moment by mcr m crack or cracking moment but if you increased the applied load more and more so we can expect tension more and more this tension will exceed the limit that inside limit that inside strength limit of concrete so concrete will not work anymore in tension so concrete cracked steel reinforcement will support this tension so we are in the cracked elastic stress stage why cracked because concrete is cracked because the tension exceeds the tensile strength of concrete so concrete will no no longer work why elastic stresses because i told you the steel reinforcement at this moment is working that's right but the stress level in steel reinforcement is still in the linear relationship between strain and the stress so we can call this stage cracked elastic stresses or working moment if you exceed the applied load more and more you reach the maximum 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 capacity of the steel reinforcement of the concrete and the, then we can call it ultimate strength stage m ultimate so we have three different loading level m crack the whole cross section is still working concrete is okay but if the applied load increased a little bit the concrete crack but the stress in steel reinforcement still within the elastic range so we have m working working a moment if the applied load uh, increased more and more and more we reach the ultimate strength of material here at the highest point then we can call it ultimate moment any questions so far these points are critical these points are critical i hope everybody paying attention to me one of the question during your fe or pe what is the correct moment of this cross section what is the working moment of this cross section what is the ultimate moment initially ultimate moment what is the value of ultimate moment of this cross section Alex, looks like you have a, a question. You don't. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Can you talk to me? Or or wait a little bit until we reach the end of the uh, class. Probably I will answer it uh, during my uh, talk. 
So we have three stages. Okay, what else? Uh, we have something called strain diagram or strain distribution. If you have beam under the effect of applied force, we have deformation. Uh, as I told you, concrete at the top will be under compression, which means under contraction. Concrete at the bottom will be under tension, which means under elongation. In between, we learn it from strength of material, in between compression and the tension, we have something in between called neutral axis. Do you remember? The meaning of neutral axis, no tension, no compression, something equal zero. So this diagram called strain diagram. Strain means concrete at the top under contraction. Concrete at the bottom under elongation or steel at the bottom under elongation. So if we have contraction and we have elongation and I connect in between, so we have something in between called neutral axis. And this shape called strain diagram of the cross section. Here is the cross section of the beam. The top of the cross section under contraction. The bottom of the cross section under elongation. So we have compression. We have tension. But uh, I am talking about strain. Strain means deformation. So I will not say compression and the tension because compression and tension are related to stresses. I will talk. I I will say we have contraction and we have elongation. So we have tension strain, I'm sorry, compression strain and the tension or compressive strain and the tensile strain. Here is the strain distribution of the cross section. In between at this location, we have something called neutral axis. What about the stress distribution? Very important to understand. Before cracking, I told you concrete still good in tension and is already good in compression. So we have compression stress at the top and the compression uh, and the tensile stress at the bottom. The whole cross section is still working concrete is good still good still work in tension and the compression because we the concrete did not correct we still at the at a, at a load level before cracking before strength that tensile strength limit of concrete we still good if you increase the load a little bit the tension here will exceed the tensile strength of concrete so concrete will crack if concrete cracks no longer work so this part of concrete no longer work the only thing working at the bottom is the steel reinforcement. And the bottom, the top part of the cross section is under compression. So work or working perfect. So the final cross section will be like this. Here is the part under compression. Here is the neutral axis. Here is the steel reinforcement. Where is the rest cracked? Where is the rest of uh, reinforce, uh, concrete at this location? Cracked. If the concrete cracked, remove it from the cross section. So if you would like to draw your stress distribution, we have only this little triangle 
compression on this part of concrete and we have only this line which is tension on the steel reinforcement that's it if the loo uh, and one more thing this compression stress is triangle this line is line linear relationship but if the load increased and increased and increased until you you reach the ultimate nothing will happen concrete is still cracked steel reinforcement is still working so we have here stress the compression part of concrete is under compression and the stress distribution is a curve not linear like this one we have three different stress distribution based on what is the stage you are in if you still in a cracking stage the whole cross section is still working so your stress distribution looks like this one side is under compression and the other side under tension and you have neutral axis in between if you are in cracked elastic stress stage in this one we have part of concrete cracked remove it the remaining concrete is under compression we have a stress linear relationship triangle and we have a steel reinforcement we have tension that's it so your stress we should remove this dashed line uh, and if you are in the ultimate stage nothing will change steel reinforcement under tension but this tension will exceed or will reach yielding and the compression uh, uh, concrete under compression the stress distribution will be non-linear distribution okay perfect thank you <laughs> yes if the concrete the tension in concrete exceeds the limit concrete will crack no longer work remove it the only thing will work is the steel reinforcement if you don't have steel reinforcement failure will happen okay if you don't have steel reinforcement at the bottom and the crack the heaven Failure will happen. So, steel reinforcement are important. Just a quick review. We have something called moment of inertia. Uh, P T cube over 12 for rectangle, the parallel time, the perpendicular cube over 12. Do you remember? Uh, if the x axis batting through the centroid, if not, if you have something far away from the centroid, so we need to add another part uh, area time d square do you remember uh, section properties moment of inertia if you are talking about a rectangle and the centroid of this rectangle we have neutral axis x so the moment of inertia b time t cube over 12 but if you have cross section and your axis is here so we will add b t cube over 12 plus this area time this distance square we have something called modular ratio do you remember i believe you learned something about it in, uh, in, in, in uh, strengths of material modular ratio we have two material we have concrete and we have steel steel has modulus of elasticity es concrete has modulus of elasticity e concrete if you divide e steel modulus of elasticity of steel divide modulus of elasticity of concrete this ratio can be called n which you call modular ratio 
this modular ratio is very important and i will talk more about this ratio next time when we start our problem